This is the new Maserati Levante, the first SUV from Maserati and it's a really well thought of the car here at the Geneva Motor Show in 2016 and we have it for you here on Autofuel, your number one resource for Imnos car views and your number one community to discuss cars. So we have a first look here at this massive front with rather slim headlights and beneath the hood we'll have, um, well, it's some V6 turbo petrol engine 350 and 425 horsepower as well as a V8 with 560 horsepower. Price in Germany will most probably start around 65,000 euros and that brings it close to the Maharaji Ghibli and that is also the sharing platform because it's a modified platform from the Quattroporta and the Ghibli so something kind of a mix and I think you also see that. I see a lot of Ghibli especially on the side um, part here we're not able to see the whole car outline now because <laughs> the trunk is obviously occupied right now but I can also um, have a first look at the trunk of um, how spacious it really is. Hello, hello. <laughs> and um, well it goes quite wide in there with the trunk and we can soon take another deeper look at it because there's also a vehicle we can um, take into the exhaust pipe, a really massive two, si two pipes on one side, there will another one two on the other side. 21 inch alloys, two color scheme, we can see here at the side profile and from the, well, even though the hatch is not closed there, I think they've done it in a quite elegant way that it doesn't look too clumsy because sporty big SUVs always tend to, you know, look a little bit too bulky, too clumsy and I think they have managed it here quite well. Also those side out, out, uh, air outtakes at the side is also carried over as we've seen in the recent Ghibli SQ4 review for example. More probably the most remarkable thing is that the headlights are really slim, as you can see it here. And that builds a contrast to this huge Maserati front grille, which is again not having the 3D Maserati logo anymore. If you pick that package here with all of the sensors and the front camera, because there, behind the 2D logo, the sensors are hidden. So I think you have got a first overview of the exterior. I'm really looking forward to your comments because this one here has been anticipated really majorly and there's now hardly any luxury manufacturer left that is not offering an SUV. And to show you the whole outline of the car I've asked her to close the hatch here right now that you can see the whole side profile combined with the hatch. There it is also an electric button to close the hatch. It goes electronically closed and there it is. Has a little bit some kind of infinity in the rear, don't you think so as well? But we saw that with the Ghibli already as well. This has kind of an infinity style. But overall, I think, well, I expected that it looked, you know, more BMW X6 style, but um, I'm kind of surprised. So, so I basically like the design. And from the rear with a closed hatch, now to have the straight perspective. Very nice head, uh, very nice taillights here as well. And the big Levante name. See, there's a small part beneath, uh, above the rear view camera. It's kind of flowing. It's just a little sharp corner. I saw an interesting design detail there in the middle. And now to the interior. Let's start here with the hatch. Opens electronically and see if there's any. Well, could be a little bit lesser, um, a little bit more of the sensi sensitivity. This one here flips out automatically, and well, there isn't like too much space to see. Uh, the roof line is falling very much down. That limits the space definitely. Beneath that one here, some more space left. So it's not the most spacious SUV so far, but I mean, you obviously don't buy this car to have the most space. But if you compare it, for example, to a Maserati sedan then you have a better access to the trunk. So it's also at the same time, not only Maserati SUV, but also the Maserati station wagon, if you would take it so far. So if you want to drive a Maserati and um, maybe think about your family, this one is surely better suitable. And it wasn't up there. You can press it here and then it opens it, closes again. Let's see. Yeah. Here again, um, could be more sensitive that the sensor pops up again. But the way the tail lights there I got this 3d form you see I can touch in there right there it's also on also this design here below here that's very interesting concept it's not the calmest design um, but I think they got some 
great ideas. The strong shoulders with the 3D Maserati logo, um, always quite fancy that. Um, with those privacy glass, it's hard to see if someone is sitting inside, but at the moment it's obviously not. And some colleagues are, you know, kind of rude when taking their sh pictures. We are not. Oh, the rear doors, they open quite well, almost 90 degrees. I didn't expect that out of a Maserati. This is the rear compartment in here now. But um, I'm first try to get in the front compartment because and then I can really measure how much space there is in the rear. What is interesting that same with the Mother Ghibli, for example, there's no frame around the rear windows and so I can um, I can also also uh, touch that one directly at the glass. Now sit down in the front driver's seat. Wow, a very sporty scene with, with carbon inlets. I really like that. They, it's not that thick anymore, like for example we've seen in the other Maseratis, so they've um, done it a little bit sportier, definitely. Um, I heard that there are also some parts of the Jeep Grand Cherokee built in there. Um, I'm not quite sure what is like kind of visible and what is, you know, from another part. This one here more looks like the other Maserati models, for example, with those huge, really well-built shifting levers here, definitely. The cockpit is rather, you know, classic and lock right and left. A little bit of a digital screen on the inside, so no re-revolution, but I really like this new steering wheel, definitely. From the inside, we got those new temperature levers here. They are still analog. You can see it maybe here. So here, on this part here. Nothing special, but also basically very solid. Don't have something activated here. In the middle part is new with this new control stick and They've also worked on the sound design, obviously. And, well, maybe they've seen, okay, well, Audi is doing a very good job there as for the sound design with this stuff. And so they thought, oh, maybe let's do that as well. And so that's one thing they did here. You also have an off-road mode for the first time here in the Maserati because you um, can, of course, get that with four-wheel drive only. And it will also feature an air suspension also have a button here for the air suspension that you can lift up the car or lift it down again and maybe let's find a good driving position the overview to the front is quite okay I love that you got Alcantara covering off the ceiling here in black Alcantara that makes a very good impression then as well here analog Maserati clock is popping over here and overall I think they held the cockpit quite of clean not too much playing around so I really like that here and it creates a sporty atmosphere, but again, you have an upright seating position, so it will be more comfortable than, for example, in some of the other Maserati sedans, especially for the long haul. And people nowadays seek this plus in comfort, definitely. And um, now as I'm sitting here right now, I want to compare very soon how I sit in the back, and then we can maybe change with our colleague there. So that's it. As I would be driving, I have plenty of knee space left, and that's one factor of this high seating position that you do save some knee space although the car is not really longer. We don't have a panoramic roof here but as the SUV is allowed to be higher and not that low as it's down really plenty of head space so if um, there would be a panoramic roof inbuilt here even then I would have enough headroom. So it's definitely the most practical and most versatile Maserati yet. Also I feel quite comfortable here as for the seating position. So overall, what they offer here is a very nice package. And as it will also be cheaper than the Quattro Porta, it's also not the most, you know, well, probably we can even say it's the most reasonable Maserati so far. And I mean, what can you, uh, can you usually say that about a very large SUV? Usually not. But if you compare it then with sedans, you can really do more with this car than with sedans and have a better usage of space if you compare them um, from what we have on the outside and then have on the inside. Hope you like this first insight here into the Maserati SUV. And also tell me what you think about the, the name of Levante and what you think about the exterior and the interior parts we've shown you. Thank you very much for watching Auto Gefühl. This preview episode was Thomas. Also check out more Geneva Motor Show videos from us. There's a special playlist and you will also find them on our channel. And there are also Maserati driving reviews you should not miss. For example, with the Ghibli SQ4, also the Ghibli diesel, and we also have the Quad Reporter. And then we, of course, look forward to drive this very SUV, especially how it behaves in the driving performance.